Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of The Prophet Teaches. A question. Do you like to have yourself purified, your children obedient to you? Do you like your dua to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Long time the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam raising their hands to the sky, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without being accepted. What is the reason? Allah is pure and he accepts only what is pure. These are the golden statements of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith that we will explain for today's episode after listening to those words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Narrated on the authority of Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Allah the Almighty is good and accepts only that which is good. Allah has commanded the faithful to do that which he commanded the messengers. And the Almighty has said, O ye messengers, eat of the good things and do right. And Allah the Almighty has said, O ye who believe, Eat of the good things wherewith we have provided you. Then he mentioned the case of a man who, having journeyed far, is disshelved and dusty, and who spreads out his hands to the sky, saying, O Lord, O Lord, while his food is unlawful, his drink is unlawful, his clothing is unlawful, and he is nourished unlawfully. So how can he be answered? Collect. We need to strive to know the ruling of the Sharia on a particular incident. Why scholars had to put a lot of effort trying to figure out how to give the ruling on such topics and issues. Islam tells you to look good, to smell good. The reason of the recession was the collaboration between insurance companies and the banks. Some scholars, though stated that it is permissible for you to insure because you're compelled to do this by the government by law but you're not allowed to benefit from the insurance policy the greatest of prophets islam was his only goal عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله تعالى طيب لا يقبل إلا طيبا وإن الله أمر المرسلين بما أمر به المؤمنين فقال يا أيها الرسل كلوا من الطيبات واعملوا صالحا إني بما تعملون بصير وقال يا أيها الذين آمنوا كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم ثم ذكر الرجل أشعث أغبر يمد يديه إلى السماء يا رب يا رب ومطعمه حرام ومشربه حرام وملبسه حرام وغذي بالحرام فأنا يستجاب له رواه مسلم this is one of the basic ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ on purity. The Prophet ﷺ briefly is talking about the concept of how Allah accepts only the pure things. Because Allah is a tayyib, Allah is the pure, the one who accepts everything which is pure. Then the Prophet ﷺ exposed that with a very prominent issue which is the acceptance of dua as if the prophet ﷺ is telling us these supplications or invocations are accepted if the persons make sure that their livelihood are pure and their acts are pure and they are themselves pure 
then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept them and they will attain taqwa which is the highest grade the person or the Muslim craves after piety or fear of Allah. At the beginning, the narrator of this hadith is Abu Huraira. May Allah be pleased with him. He is one of the most prolific narrators of the ahadith, the prophetic traditions. He narrated more than 5,000 ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ. He accepted Islam at the age or at the year 7 after Hijrah. And the Prophet ﷺ died, as we know, in the 11th year after Hijrah. So he spent almost four years with the Prophet. But he had a dedication to stay with the Messenger ﷺ in the mosque, receiving every single act and deed or saying the Prophet ﷺ has did or pronounced it. Some of the people, they accuse Abdullah or Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhr, the real name of Abu Huraira, of fabricating a lot of ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ. By making statistics, it was found out that all the ahadith of Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, were narrated on the six books of hadith, the book of Al-Bukhari, Muslim, and nasai Abu Dawood, Al-Tirmidhi, and Ibn Majah. Moreover, most of those ahadith were narrated by some other companions of the Prophet ﷺ. He, by himself, narrated almost 200 ahadith by himself. Those are the ahadith which were not shared by other companions. If you count how many days that he spent with the Prophet ﷺ during those four years, and you distribute them on the number of ahadith, you will find that he was narrating just three ahadith or even two every day. Abu Huraira narrating everything about the Prophet. You can't imagine if the, if the Prophet just blinks his eyes, if he moves, if he makes takbir, if he stays, if he greets somebody. This is regarded as a hadith. So statistically and uh, scientifically speaking, most of the ahadith of the Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, were narrated by a great number of companions and they are not an exaggeration of the number. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, explained that. And he said, I was a man who was dedicated to the Prophet's companionship. The Ansar were very busy with their trade and business. Uh, or with their agriculture. And the Muhajireen, the immigrants were busy with their business and transactions. But I dedicated most of the time to the Prophet ﷺ. He was invited by one of the rulers to recite some of the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And later on, after one year, and that man, uh, that, that ruler actually left somebody writing the ahadith of Abu Huraira from behind a curtain. Later on in the next year, Abu Huraira was invited to repeat the same ahadith and he committed no mistakes. Abu Huraira also wrote some of the prophetic traditions. In the Sahifa, which is very well known, the Sahifa of Hammam ibn Munabbi, he left it and this is documented. That all of these ahadith are found in the Musnad, the book of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. May Allah be pleased with him. Let us now move to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The first statement says, إن الله تعالى طيب لا يقبل إلا طيبا. Allah is the pure. Allah is the holy. Allah is the Quddus, the one who is free from any deficiencies. He is the perfect, the one and only, who is worshipped. And he is the one which doesn't have any deficient attributes or qualities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to that, he accepts only what is pure. Pure in terms of aqidah, of belief. Pure in terms of the acts and deeds. Acts which are sincerely dedicated by, uh, to Allah and following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Also Allah accepted the sayings which are pure. The speech which is clean of any envy. Allah also accepts the hearts which are pure, crystal, doesn't have any hatred for the others. This is one of the basic conditions. The word tayyib in the Quran is mentioned in all of the facets and phases of man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself, <laughs> To Allah is raised or uplifted the good pure words. Allah is talking about the believers saying, 
الذين تتوفاهم الملائكة طيبين when they live the life a life of purity when their souls are taken by the angels Allah is praising them and says they are pure welcome to the heavens and to the gardens of paradise salamun alaykum tibtum these are the first words pronounced to the people of Jannah they will be welcomed and they, are, they will be purified because before entering the Jannah there is a qantara, there is a tunnel which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will stop all the believers to solve the problems that they have together even after accountability, after the scale of good deeds and evil deeds Allah will stop all the people to purify their hearts so the people who are graded to the Jannah, the Garden of Paradise they are not the people who are having hatred or envy in their hearts they will have their hearts pure and clean before being admitted to the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Purity of charity is one of the most important things which are related to this hadith. Because a person cannot acquire his livelihood from an illegal means or money, and he spent that in the cause of Allah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in his authentic hadith مَن تَصَدَّقَ بِعَدْلِ تَمْرَ مِنْ كَسْبٍ طَيِّبٍ وَلَا يَقْبَلُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا طَيِّبًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَتَقَبَّلُهَا بِيَمِينِ Whoever spends a, a, a date's measure as an act of charity for the sake of Allah from pure means and Allah only accept the pure means and livelihood Allah will receive it with his right hand and he will multiply it for him for millions of hasanat of good deeds. My dear brothers and sisters, there are a lot of people that they acquire their means of livelihood through illegal and unlawful means. Like people who are working in liquor stores, people who are selling alcohol for example, other people who are treating in riba, usurious interest, Others who work but they did not make a dedication for their work so they receive their salaries without paying back a, a, a compensating uh, 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 effort and work for the money that they receive. All of this is haram. There is, all of this is not pure means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised and accepted. When they are making a charity, their charity is not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah doesn't prohibit you to do something and by the other side, He takes it from you in the form of a charity. This is very important. In Islam, the concept of money laundering, some of the people, they acquire their money through illegal means like trafficking and drugs or doing things which are not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they start spending that money for the welfare of the community for the welfare of the Muslim for building masjids for making uh, prosperity and, and, and for and helping the needy and the uh, wayfarer and also the poor all of those acts are not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they are prohibited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them as illegal means. When you go through the stories of our Salaf, the stories of our ancestors and the companions of the Prophet you find amazing stories of how they were very meticulous in acquiring the livelihood in the way which is best and accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will have a short break and then we will continue our discussion of the hadith. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts, our souls, and our money and wealth and our children. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. live and ask other questions please I would like uh, Sheikh to um, comment on that and to give me uh, how can I answer listening to the Adhan and repeating after the Mu'addin is similarly a highly recommended act of worship so how does he reply to her this is what we call it an invalid analogy 
uh, because simply there is no comparison between answering four out of five in any exam and skipping a faridah such as or a pillar such as a prayer. No one is exempt from praying except women during the menses. Sister Um Saud also wants to know if a woman has to cover her feet when she's praying. The four fuqaha, Abu Hanifa, wa Malik, wa Shafi'i, wa Ahmed, the, the greatest representatives of the fiqh schools, are in agreement. It is haram. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We listen to the first segment of the hadith which the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is pure and He loves all and He accepts only that which is pure. And this we have a discussion with some of the brothers here in the studio, some of the questions that may arise about this hadith. Have Brother uh, Mahmoud and Brother Muhammad Yaqub, may Allah bless them and accept from them for attendance here and you listen to the hadith yes uh, we start with brother uh, Muhammad you have any questions or? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim first of all I want to thank you for your great speech Khair. God bless you second I want to ask uh, I think an important question uh, if someone uh, is not pure I mean his money is not from a halal source Will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his good deeds like uh, pilgrimage, uh, charity, and so on? Or will, or is he exempted from this? Okay. So you mean some, some people, for example, when they uh, think that uh, as long as they are not pure or they are not acquiring their livelihood from pure means, yes. legal uh, earnings, so they are exempted from the obligatory deeds because yeah, that, Allah will not easy. accept in both ways. Yeah. No, according to the scholars, they said that a person is not exempted in this case and he must do that. Yeah. And it's not sufficient for him to claim that he is not pure. And these are some of the pretexts of the shaitan, the Satan, the he insinuates in their hearts. They are requested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify their money yeah. and their livelihood and to spend of the pure and lawful means, but at the same time, they, are, they should not give up and they need to make repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this case. But he is afraid if he leave this uh, forbidden source of money, maybe he will not find another source, another halal source. So I, yani, uh, I want you to give advice to the, those uh, people. Yes, because this is a lack of certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a lack of belief, because Allah subhanahu said about himself, Allah is the real sustainer and provider for all humanity. He's the one who gives them and spends on them day and night. So, the Prophet وسلم, said according to the authentic hadith, Jibreel alayhi salam, the angel, inspired in my heart that and he said Lan tamuta nafsun hatta warizqaha, that no soul will die until it will receive the whole of its provisions that Allah has destined for, for it and it's yes. a breath the breath that the person takes the drop of water that the person drinks this is destined and known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him so the Prophet ﷺ said, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَجْمِلُوا فِي الطَّلَبِ So fear Allah with regard to earning your livelihood. Yeah. And be modest and be at ease. So some of the people, they rush into picking it here from here and there. And he does a lot of things to just make his livelihood. To gain money, just to gain to, money. Just to yeah. gain money. And he makes his orientation just for the sake of money. Yeah. And he is the slave of dinar and dirham. He is a slave of money, he is a slave of dollar. His real master and real, real lord is that the money, the wealth. Mm -hmm. So the Prophet ﷺ said, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ فِيرْ اللَّهِ And أَجْمِلُوا make إِجْمَالِ طَلَبْ And be relaxed in taking the provisions of Allah. Because yeah. what is in the hands of Allah is never ever taken except through acts of obedience. Yeah, 
So if you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if a person leaves something, abandons something, for the pleasure of Allah, seeking sincerely the pleasure of Allah, Allah will compensate with him things which are bitter. And it is in halal. So when you find somebody is a thief, for example, a person eating something which is haram, yes. is actually if he is patient, he is not smart, because if he is patient, Allah will provide him the same. But through a legal means, and we have stories about that from Ali ibn Abi Talib, for example, when he left the horse and he found it actually stolen by somebody, so he returned it back to the market and sold the same horse. And he said, you know, if you just were patient for a while, I would actually give it yeah, to you. That's right. So subhanAllah, some of the people, they are rushing and they are not patient in yeah. taking the provisions of Allah. Subhanahu. So an advice for them is, it is better for you. Yeah. to minimize some of the luxurious life that you have mainly for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this life is nothing. This life you are going to leave it. It's a journey, a trip to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and definitely you are going to be questioned before Allah. And it's very so short. What, yeah. Very short. Yeah. So to be patient, that's one of the righteous uh, uh, companions, female companions. She yeah. used to tell her husband, fear Allah in the provisions that you bring in your in 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 in, in, in our yeah. house because this is you are responsible for providing it we will be patient for the hunger in this life but, but we, we will not be exactly yeah. we will not be able to be patient for the great hunger and thirst on the day of a judgment when we stand before allah that's why the, the wife also has a very positive rule for her husband when he, she finds him doing something haram eating something which is not lawful or acquiring his means from unlawful means, she needs to give him alert, to be patient and give him advice regarding that. Sheikh, I want to ask, uh, if I know that uh, this uh, person earns his money in unlawful way, is it uh, permissible to, uh, to me to eat with him or work with him? Yes, I caught for you actually the uh, hadith of uh, or the statement of uh, Ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, when he said there are some people actually they are acquiring their uh, wealth through unlawful means. Should we eat with them? And he said, yes, you can eat with them because it, the, the, the harm, the sin is up to them. Mm. And you will enjoy it. You will enjoy and they will be punished. Mm. This is number one. That's why the scholar said, if, for example, a person inherits an estate. And this in the state was actually acquired through unlawful means. Is it halal for you? Yes, it is halal because that person will be held accountable for it. Also for, for, yes, for, also this is for according. His... Yes, this is according to the, the the preferred view of the scholars. So you can eat no problem, and it is reported that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ate with some of the Jews, yeah. and it is very well known that uh, even in Medina they were having interest or injurious interest. So their livelihood was not actually completely pure. But there is a room for wara, setting a set of doubts, as we mentioned yeah. in the previous hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu yes. and it is preferable. So Imam Ahmad, for example, he used to set aside all the food and the bread being proud from his son, because he knew that his son worked for the ruler, and that ruler actually was collecting money by force from the people. Yeah, like uh, in taxes and so on. Yes, like the, the by force and uh, imposing that on them yeah. and taking them without their uh, free will. So he was actually abandoning that. And it is uh, there is still a room for war'abad, as I said, according to the uh, limits of sharia, it is still lawful and there is no problem, inshallah. So, Doctor, if, if someone has money, this money is from illegal way, it's haram. And uh, if he wants to, to perform al-hajj, or uh, to do charity or something else. Uh, what, is, what is the best way to do with this money? Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me some deeds from this or not? Uh, leg legally speaking, it will be sufficient. Yeah. And the scholars say that you will not be required to make another hajj. But according to the authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, when a person takes the right or the camel, or what, whatsoever, like a ship, or a boat, or yeah. a, a car, going for hajj. Yes. And he earns his livelihood from a lawful means. A caller will call upon him and says, uh, return 
having a sin, not receiving a reward, your provisions are haram and your right is from haram. So how you approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this way? That's why it is recommended to purify the livelihood before approaching and doing all those acts. If I'm not sure about this money, if it is money halal or haram? Exactly. It is a very good question because there are a lot of people, they sometimes, in an employee, for example, he works for uh, his employer, but yeah. sometimes he spends a few, a few minutes or a few seconds not paying attention to his work. So we think that there are some points or some amounts which are not pure, yeah. one hundred percent. That's why the scholars prefer that a person makes charity at the end of each month, so that he p tries to purify, cleans yeah. the dirt of the money. Uh, he's not actually insist on doing a sin, and he's actually uh, not providing. But in the same in the same way, trying to purify the money and working hard. Uh, for uh, his work. So, Doctor, what about the extra money? If I have a money and I put this money in the bank, I have account in, in the bank. What about the extra money that I receive every month or every three months? Um, I, I will answer that quickly because we unfortunately ran out of time. So, it is the scholar said you can spend it in the uh, general welfare of the community, yeah. but not on masjids, on building mosques, or in copying the mushafs. This is the authentic view of the scholars. And you make sure that. There is, you do not expect any reward from that. Because Allah, as we mentioned, is pure and He accepts only what is pure. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower His mercy upon all of you and upon all of our viewers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us and purify our hearts and our deeds. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.